So this work, like every other project at Google, is a collaboration between a village. Uh, and so thanks for coming. Now, availability really, really matters for us. Our users use our applications to get their work done. And when our systems are down, they can't get their work done. And when things are really bad, they're not ability, the inability to get work done shows up in the front page of the New York Times, which we really don't like. And so we spend a lot of our energy and time trying to improve the availability of our system. Now, for any such effort to be successful, we need to have a measure that tells us how we are doing so that we can focus on optimizing that measure, making that measure better. Now, before I get into that, before I get into the measure, let me define what availability means. Availability is a measure M, which varies between 0 and 100%. 0% means it's unavailable, it's globally down, and 100% means it's globally up. Now, what does meaningful mean? Now, for this measure to be useful for us, it has to reflect what our users perceive. If the measure says that the availability is high, we want our users to be happy with the availability. And if the measure says the availability is low, we expect a proportional dissatisfaction from our users. So that's what we mean by it being meaningful. Now, if, in contrast, a measure is not meaningful, the problem is that it might guide us, the Google engineers, towards optimizing and fixing the wrong problems. So a non-meaningful measure is actually misleading. The most commonly used metric for computing availability is success ratio. And it is common and popular because it's very easy to measure. It's simply a ratio of the count of successful events to the count of total events. This particular metric has two significant problems. The first problem is that it can undercount the impact of an outage on our users. For example, consider this first happy user who gets mostly successful operations, and then every now and then they get one unsuccessful operation. That user is going to be mostly happy because now and then something fails, but when they retry it, it works, and they can go on and get their work done. Now, in contrast, imagine that we take all the unsuccessful operations and collapse them into a contiguous time interval. So now the user is going to be unhappy because most of the time, everything works. But when it doesn't work, it may be down for many minutes or many hours preventing them from getting any work done. So in this way, both of these users have the same success ratio, but their impact on them is significantly different. It's not meaningful to them. It actually turns out that success ratio may also overcount user impact. So for example, it may be the case that when the system is down, our users change their behavior. So they keep hitting the button over and over again to get it to succeed. So all of a sudden, the inter-arrival time of requests during outages is fundamentally different from the inter-arrival during when the system is up. So in this way, it can overcount impact. So it's commonly used but it's not necessarily meaningful. And in any case, users think in terms of how long the system has been down rather than counts. So it's not necessarily modeling what the users care about. Another metric that is also commonly used is uptime ratio. And this is nice because it's in terms of time. The numerator is uptime, and the denominator is total time. Now, the problem with this metric is, how do we measure when the system is up and when the system is down? This is done usually in one of two ways. One way is for the reliability team to manually quantify the system as being up or down. Another is to use some kind of a threshold. So for example, if the system fails 5% of the requests, we consider it to be down. If 
Otherwise, we consider it to be up. The problem with both the manual entering of this availability and the threshold is that it's not proportional. If it's a threshold, then you just go over the threshold and you get a drastically different outcome with respect to availability. Now this approach, especially when we are entering uptime or downtime manually, it works well for global outages. If the system is completely down, then you can say, okay, it died at 9 a.m. and it came back up at 9.30. But that is almost never the case. As a matter of fact, local outages are the common case, not global outages. And if you were to go and look at those articles I had on the first slide and other articles about outages at Google, Facebook, etc., you will likely find that it's very rare that the whole system is down. It's usually some percent of the users or some number of the users are having a bad time. And this is not by accident. This is by design, right? Our systems are built with control and data redundancy to make sure that our system is never completely down. And we even saw in a couple of talks this morning about how they do gradual rollouts to make sure that you know, we discover problems when the system is deployed only to a small number of users before everyone else has a bad time. So we use all the ticks. And as a result, our systems only have local kinds of outages. So in order to address the limitations of the two measures I described, uh, we have a new measure. And it's called the user uptime ratio. And the key insight is that we want to measure uptime and availability from the perspective of the user. What does that mean? So let's suppose you have three users. And for each user, the green line represents the system being up. The red line represents the system being down. So as you can see, the different users have very different perceptions of when the system was up or down, because we don't have global failures. We have local failures. And we collect that information. And then we aggregate it like this to get our nice ratio between 0 and 1, or multiply it to, to get a number between 0 and 100%. This sounds very nice. However, the challenge is, how do we know when you have billions of users? Gmail, for example, has more than 1.5 billion active users. How do we know with this many users which one has, is up and which is down? It seems like an impossible task. And the key insight that we take here is that, well, our users are making requests to our system. And we can think of their requests as probes to the system. And we can look at whether or not those probes succeed as an indication of whether or not the system is up for the particular user or down for that particular user. So this illustrates this at a high level pictorially, where the green circles represent successful requests by the user, and the red diamonds represent failed requests by the user. So this is data for a single user. So if the user has a successful request, they will assume that the system is up until they have a reason to believe otherwise. So the system stays up until they get a failed request. Once they get a failed request, from the user's perspective, the system is down until they have a reason to believe otherwise. So it stays down until they have a subsequent successful request. The actual algorithm is a little bit more involved than that. But in any case, we basically use an approach like this to model user perception. And we are able to label durations for each individual user as being up or as being down. And once we have that, we can compute the ratio on the previous slide. If you look at this data, this is from a live serving system. It shows the availability over time. You can see that this line is anything but flat. By the way, it's a log scale. Uh, and all of the graphs I'm going to show you use log scales. So you can see this is anything but flat, which underlines my point that global outages are uncommon, but lots of little local things are happening all the time. 
Now, if you take this data and you summarize it, you aggregate it into a quarter or a month, you might get an overall measure of how we did in that quarter or the month. However, the problem is that even though user uptime is designed to be meaningful to the users, if you have a very short outage or an outage that affects a very small number of users, that outage is going to be lost if you aggregate it over a month. It's going to get averaged out effectively. And we care about short outages, of course. So what we do is that we window our data. In other words, we find user uptime not just over a month or over a quarter, but over a large number of time windows starting from one minute onwards. And the way we do that is we create a window, we slide it across the data, and find the worst, win uh, the worst availability of that window. Then we try a bigger window size and we do the same, and we try a bigger window size and we do the same. The end result is that we end up with availability for many, many, many different window sizes, where the shorter window sizes give us insight into short unavailability events, and the larger window sizes give us insight into longer or larger unavailability events. And we can actually visualize this very nicely. And this particular visualization, we got the idea from uh, the minimum mutator uh, utilization metric used in the GC literature. Effectively, what we do is we plot on the x-axis the window size. And on the y-axis, we plot the availability of the worst window of that size. Remember, again, that this is a log scale. And we get a curve that looks sort of like this. Now, this curve is super rich in information. For example, by looking at the knees of the curve, we get an insight into the duration of each unavailability episode. So, for example, this particular knee tells us that there was a 15-minute episode where availability dropped to 97%, which is many, many hours of unavailability over the course of a year if that's how it continues. And we also see that if you look at the data across an entire quarter, we had 99.98% unavailability, which if you were to translate it to a year, translates to about 100 minutes of downtime a year. So by looking at the knees and the asymptotes, it gives us insight into different levels of availability at the different window sizes. Now, that I've shown you this metric, let me illustrate how useful it is in practice. And this is something we have deployed to all of our G Suite applications for about a year or more. Now, this first set of graphs that I'm going to show you here is the only graph that uses synthetic data. And the reason why we use synthetic data is that it's hard to think about whether a metric is right or wrong unless you have a notion of a ground truth. And so in the synthetic data, we generated data from a particular ground truth and saw how user uptime and success ratio works. So basically what we did in this data is that there is a one hour window and in that one hour window, there is a 20 minute of downtime. So this 20 minute right here. In this first picture, what we do is that we model the user requests as having the same inter-arrival time when the system is up and when the system is down. So the rate at which requests are, the green requests and the red requests come in is about the same. You can see that user uptime is about 65.3%. Uh, we had, our ground truth was 66%, so it's very close to that. And the success ratio is pretty close to that also. So if the inter-arrival time doesn't change, the two of them match fairly closely. Now, in the second case, we model the case where a user has a bad experience, and they say, well, you know, I might as well go and get coffee because the system is down. And so they stop making requests for a while. 
you can see once again that the user uptime ratio is 66%. So it actually models the ground truth. But the success ratio is 86.4%. So it's basically underplaying the extent of the outage. And finally, this last picture shows when we do a lot of retries when the system is down. And in that case, the user uptime ratio is again 66%. So that's correct. And then the success ratio overstates the extent of the outage. Now you might say these are all synthetic things and I'm telling you these are not. We see them all in practice. Now let's take a look at real data. So we frequently, well all the time, we look at availability data across all of our services. And here's a table that shows a monthly uh, 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 analysis of the data. And we see that two of our applications here each had 99.992% availability. So you might think, okay, they're the same, right? And so we looked at the windowed uptime graphs and they were significantly different. What the heck? Now the interesting thing is if you look at these two lines, they're telling us very, very powerful stories. The blue line has a significant episode as you can judge by this knee here where the cursor is. And what it tells us that if this episode hadn't happened, this blue system would have had much, much higher availability. In other words, its availability was dragged down because of one bad episode. The red system, on the other hand, doesn't have such a prominent knee. In other words, what it means is that the red system suffered from lots and lots and lots of small episodes over time that dragged down its availability. So by looking at this, it gives us insight into the kinds of strategies we need to pursue to address these things. Now, you might also say, well, you know, if you're making a big deal about user request success ratio being different, I showed you synthetic data. Who believes synthetic data, right? No one does. I hope. All right, so here, uh, this is again data from production. This is all real learning systems serving billions of users. Um, you can see in this graph that user uptime shows a much higher availability than success ratio, which is the blue line. So user uptime is the red line, the success ratio is the blue line. What, which one is right? Why are they different? We started to dive into this and we realized that if we partition our data by typical users and hyper, hyperactive users, and these hyperactive users are 0.01%, some very, very small number of super ultra active users, and we plot them separately. So in the left graph, you can see that the user uptime overall, which is a solid line, very closely tracks the typical user, which is the vast, vast, vast majority of our users. Whereas our hyperactive users have worse availability. If you look at the right picture, that's for success ratio. And you can see that success ratio gets significantly biased by the hyperactive users because they're issuing so many requests that they are bringing down the overall availability of the system or the perception of the system. And the success ratio overall, which is a solid blue line, actually tracks a very, very small percentage of the hyperactive users rather than the typical user. And it turns out that our hyperactive users are three orders of magnitude or more active than our typical but still active users. So they can really bias the data if we use the success ratio. Here's another example, once again, um, and this is a windowed availability graph, uh, which by the way we can apply not just to user uptime but to success ratio if you so choose. But this shows that the user uptime is again much higher availability than success rate in this case. If you look at the time series, we see that user uptime which is in red and uh, success ratio which is in blue seem to track pretty closely at the extremes of this graph. But then something happened in the middle 
that caused them to diverge significantly. What the heck is happening here? It actually turns out, on investigation we found out, that a very small number of users had turned on a third-party app. And that third-party app, they had authorized to make requests on behalf of them. And what that app had was it had, from my perception, a bug. It was retrying without any kind of a back off. So if it got an error, it immediately retried. So it was resulting in biasing the overall data towards these hyperactive retries. All right, so to summarize, uh, we use window uptime for all G Suite apps, calendars, Drive, Gmail, Docs, Hangouts, et cetera, et cetera. User uptime ratio gives us a clear sense for what the user impact is in an incident. And we have teams that look at these short outages that use windowed user uptime exposes the knees and they try to address them. And the key insight is that you know, if you take these small incidents and you don't address them, eventually they grow up to be big incidents. So there is significant value to going after that one minute outage, figuring out what happened, fixing it, and that will hopefully avoid an hour long outage in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, uh, good talk. Uh, I have a question about your uh, metric, yeah. meaningful availability. So you are talking about availability, but not reliability. But throughout your talk, you are mentioning about the continuous downtime. So the availability metric that you propose doesn't really capture that continu continuity in, in any way, right? Um, so what do so, you mean? So when, when you're talking about availability, you're talking about the ratios in terms of counts yes. taken over users. Or, or times. Right? But you're not talking about how continuous was this downtime with respect to a user, right? Ah, okay. So actually, it turns out that the, the windowed uh, availability does that, right? So for example, if you look at this, this the knee of the blue curve gives you sort of a con the, the duration of the continued episode. The window yes. actually captures that. Okay, so, so that's like on top of your meaningful ability, or is this a part of the meaningful ability metric? It's part of it. Okay, yeah. and the second question, if I uh, can. Yeah. No, we don't okay. actually have sure. time, so <laughs> last question, and then um, can you all go ahead and start yes. the plug -in? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mark from Amazon, this is super cool work. Uh, l love to see this kind of thinking. Uh, so your user perception metric seems to be memoryless, uh, in that you assume that customers' perception becomes immediately good again after the end of an outage. Did you consider adding some kind of hysteresis or, or you know, memory to, to uh, try and capture the user psychology of, of worrying more <laughs> about uh, you know, more recent outages? Very good thought. Uh, you know, we have tried a lot of variants. So for example, one of the things that we have considered is you know, what if the user has a, a, you know, a, a, a successful request and then they go for a three month vacation? It would be silly for us to consider that whole time to be like, the system is up. So we have added a number of additional components to our system so that, for example, it will recognize that a user has left um, and we end the session. Uh, the particular one that you mentioned, we have not tried that. But in general, what we have found is that the metric is very stable. The various heuristics we try, even though they make us feel good because we feel it models user perception better, seems not to move the metric very much. Cool, thank you. Yeah, of course. Let's thank the speaker again.